changes in the number of in, 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 set of those in, uh, among speakers. Therefore, I would like Professor Vishnikov to participate in the, this discussion. And with your permission, we move straight to the agenda. Let me do the first presentation. And therefore, we are getting back to work. Okay. Today, at this session, we will consider a number of issues related to global processes, global dangers, including situations of emergencies and catastrophes which appear in nature, and the, this problem becomes quite acute because natural phenomena are becoming meaningful for two reasons. First, that is that our planet, due to active activity of different nations, continents, civilizations, therefore, the processes initiated uh, I'm sorry, I cannot hear the speaker. With the increase of each of these phenomena, there are cascade of technogenic catastrophes, and it's more and more difficult to react to these catastrophes. While this reaction is requested, uh, required at both national and international level, the gift of the last century, which mankind has acquired, powerful, inf powerful infrastructures aimed at improvement of uh, the of human life. These infrastructures carry inbuilt danger. And some examples that are quite familiar to you, I would like to tell. 1970s, in India, chemical plant. There was a huge catastrophe. Uh, explosion of chemicals in the atmosphere and the huge cloud has been formed, which led to immediate death of about 3,000 people. About 2,000 people uh, had serious health damages. This was a huge catastrophe for international scale. And it became the reason for the United Nations adopting the declaration. Which was entitled the danger of transporter catastrophes and overcoming those catastrophes. It was the first international document of such a scale, and it became uh, predecessor for development of policy, scientific, uh, political, and supervisory policies all over the world. Then, with huge consequences for the entire world and for the continents, there were nuclear power plants uh, accidents. First, it was an accident at Three Mile Island in the United States, 
when uh, the reactor has been damaged, radioactivity has spread beyond the water of the power plant, but there were no tragic consequences because they managed to localize the emergency situation, although the power plant has been decommissioned. The next uh, accident, which you all know and felt very well, was Chernobyl, 1986. And one of the sections of the reactor and the accident had consequences. I will not say about it, but these consequences has not been overcome till now. And we still have lots of work ahead of us to create protective casing for the power plant. Next was what are you doing? Next was in Japan. As you see, in this case, the consequences, it was a consequence of an earthquake, powerful tsunami, which managed auxiliary systems of power plant, cooling of the reactor was interrupted, explosions, pollu pollution with radioactivity, so it was quite, quite serious accident. So it's three largest uh, tr nuclear plant accidents had demonstrated that there are discrepancies in reaction. What did it result in? Magate in, in Magate rules, in uh, Soviet and Russian rules, in national regulations. It has been uh, stated probability of such a heavy consequences accidents was uh, the probability was estimated as 10 minus 6 10 minus in uh, to minus 7 degree per year it means that if we have 10 million nuclear reactors on earth we'd have one such accident per year if we have one such reactor probability of such a catastrophe would be once in a million years. And this rule, this norm is still existing. When catastrophes happened, accidents happened in Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, it turned out that the probability was uh, 2 multiplied by the factor of 10 to minus third degree compared to 10 to minus 6 degree. That means we have miscalculated by a factor of 1,000, stating it in our regulatory documents. After Chernobyl, there were tremendous efforts, both on national and international level, reconsideration of in the general, in the total energetic balance of the world, and a lot was, uh, we were able to do a lot, but again and again, uh, Fukushima appears, and it turned out that during 25 years that passed since Chernobyl, the probability of a heavy, heavy catastrophe has, was brought down by one, by one degree. If we wanted to achieve the levels, risk levels, which inscribed in the norms, in the national international norms about the national power, nuclear power station. Uh, and so if we knew what uh, this, we could have achieved it in another five, 25 years, we have to revise these norms uh, and again and to find out how the economic, political, engineering, uh, 
uh, activities of uh, advanced countries, the members of the nuclear club, in order to achieve the compliance um, between the real indicators and what these norms are talking about, I indicate. indicate. Next slide, please. Uh, to big uh, and heavy catastrophes, uh, some of them are, happened on the uh, submarines, nuclear submarines. In particular, or oh, one of the examples, the Komsomol is a nuclear submarine which is lying deep under the surface of the Black Sea. Uh, still reactors, nuclear reactors are there. A lot has been done to eliminating the opportunity of corrosive destruction of these reactors and the mission of radioactive substances into the surrounding waters. The Minister of Science, the Minister of Nuclear Energy and Academy of Science has done a lot, and we hope. There is no much, um, we can't expect, we, there is no much opportunity, the high opportunity of what it is going to happen. How come some also somewhere in the north? Next slide, please. A big catastrophe in the nuclear power uh, submarine Kursk. What is important for us in this case? When it happened, this blow, this torpedo, it was torpedized, but the nuclear reactor was subjected to powerful um, uh, hydrodynamic wave. The reactors are tested, calculated, and tested for uh, to to uh, stand uh, up to the 30 g. But this particular reactor. These accelerations, uh, acceleration achieved several hundred G, and reactor was stood it. So it is the I can reason to say we can say that there is a good scientific culture, and we, you know, we can guarantee safe work of the nuclear power stations and reactor reactors. We have to study it and to use it into the civil engineering. Next slide. What is a heavy hazardous cat catastrophes in such advanced industry as space? Space technology, space techniques. In this case, the same rule is in, in the next is is over hazardous objects. The rule is that if on one object or this type of objects uh, two emergency situations uh, occur, the project should be stopped or bent altogether. We face such uh, situations. We did a lot to overcome this. And again, our knowledge, rules, procedures, national and both uh, international have to be uh, revised. Columbia, the Challenger shuttle, and then in in this country, pr such projects as in N1, on the safest proton installations, such emergency situations, uh, uh, two times running, and the third was, you know, kept from. So a lot should be has to be done. Civil uh, objects for a civil engineering of when uh, whole plants or factories in the Siberia, and what are the chemical uh, giant plants in Siberia, when the products of chemical reactions burn the enterprise itself. On this page, you see that very recently a fire on the oil processing plant in Venezuela. Next poster. This is in Texas in the mineral fertilizers um, enterprise when the poisonous gases were emitted into the atmosphere. This is a very f well um, wide known the classical uh, catastrophe in the, of the platform, oil drilling platform in the Mexican Bay. And this, uh, the similar catastrophe situations took place in the northern uh, more, uh, northern sea. And then and oil tankers, uh, drowned 
when a hundred thousand of tons uh, was uh, leaked into the ocean. And the Chinese uh, destruction, China destruction of the oil pipeline very recently happened. This all tells us that these technogenic catastrophes, this technogenic accompany the mankind, accompany our civilizations, not isolated cases. It, uh, all these are sub subjective to um, the, you know, repeatability. We are talking with Yuri about it. I was in the economics. What economic strategy should be to take all this in consideration? The mankind has entered the era when the mankind uh, uh, handles the very hazardous, um, dangerous technological processes that we have to in revise, uh, consider to consider to predict or to make a forecast should be made for future generations. One of the uh, recent works I wanted to tackle upon this. Academician Osipov was supposed to talk about it, but I'm doing it on his behalf. That the oil rigs, both in Northern Sea, in the Coal Peninsula, and and others. Then thousands or dozens of people die. The whole plant, the, the whole plant, so which cost. Uh, billions of dollars. The losses are tremendous, are enormous. Uh, tens or dozens of million dollars, billion dollars. When uh, North East and the Sakhalin uh, project, uh, Sakhalin Energy Project, Sakhalin 1 to 10 uh, projects are realized and investment exceed 1,000 billion dollars. Uh, the Japanese catastrophe showed that there what we have is a combination of a number of hazardous uh, threatening uh, event, hazards, uh, tsunami, earthquakes, um, ice melting, which drives from south to, to east and so icy load uh, attacks the, the platform. It, it became clear that all international ex, uh, experience showed that uh, shelf, uh, shelf um, drilling is very dangerous. So gas from Shell uh, partnership, they used to develop the system of con preventive uh, uh, diagnostics and protection. The idea is that the most dangerous components of this platform, the weight of it, uh, can achieve, can reach 150 tons. Uh, they so some tests uh, we must test about the exceeding the uh, some effects and automatically switch off the technological processes and to prevent the emergency situation, uh, such a situation which took place in Mexican Bay. Considering these issues, tell us that while analyzing the civilization development, we can uh, consider, we'll take into consideration the technosphere which is being developed on behalf of a man, and it used to say, the strategy has a lot of um, drawbacks and needs um, rec the recognition of the global hazard, not to decline the uh, necessity of uh, not it's our permanent uh, consideration. It's our permanent danger which will accompany the mankind further. Next slide. Another example of the fact that we haven't yet achieved to rehabilitate in Russia, it's a uh, destruction of the Sayana Shushinska 
power station. It was a unique um, creation, 500 meters in height. It was destroyed uh, due to technogenic uh, factors. People died there. I participated in the commission co special committee to analyze what had happened and in powerful power stations are intended to work uh, at fixed modes. Uh, they have to per permanently uh, supply the fixed amounts of uh, of energy, and the regulating should be done at a very low scale. It and you know when they tried to regulate it didn't it didn't uh, happen. So economic views, philosophical views, energy, energetic, energy technical view on this station were very different. They were incompatible. I believe that Academy of Science of the Russian Federation, which has developed the norms and standards for such unique objects as for the managing risk management and on them, it will have a good international um, feedback. It is in the testing uh, testing mode nowadays, and will enable us to change our views. Uh, industrial, cooperative, regional, or federal views and international views on these uh, objects. What I was talking about is reflected in in the general generalizing this uh, slide, and we came to the conclusion that catastrophes themselves can be of different scale. Uh, one happens on a certain objects some breaches, we call them local catastrophes, they appear often. The loss of them comparatively low, thousands of dollars. But further on, the, the chain of these catastrophes uh, brings to the point when the whole object is in, in danger. And so the losses are growing. The, we are going to the local, terrestrial, regional level of catastrophes when the losses is um, done to uh, the whole the region is suffers uh, losses, suffering losses, or on the country scale, or on the global level when a range of countries suffer from losses uh, generated by global catastrophes, when all the continents or countries suffer. In this case, when we move to the right part of this slide, the losses are counted in billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. This is uh, big losses. The points, the dots indicate the real objects um, which suffered these losses, uh, um, where this, the, worst, the worst catastrophes happened. Uh, gas pipelines, oil pipelines, <coughs> but in the legislation of the Russian Federation, <coughs> a certain vision of introduced of the infrastructure of the object that um, take place and uh, are maintained, are operated in the technical subject of the technical regulation, uh, including mobile f telephones, which. These objects are very many of them. Then there are hazardous industrial inter enterprises um, where they they use the uh, gas pipelines, military, which serve for military purposes, the critically important objects, which by definition of the Security Council uh, says that according to this, uh, the termination of their activity, of their operation, uh, is hazardous for the region as well, for the country as well. And then strategically important um, uh, objects when a country or a group of countries suffer, may suffer from them. On the level part, on the red part of this, it's some 
uh, different industries. From the, on the other left hand side, uh, we uh, pointed the natural hazards, earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, avalanches, uh, washing down the uh, banks, um, uh, wide erosion, uh, wind erosion to hazardous in the natural um, hazards we can join. So there is a list of 20 uh, dangerous or hazardous natural process. Luther Ranch was supposed to talk about it today, but it's clear even without it that nature and the technical infrastructure, uh, while when they are interacting so forces the mankind to spend a lot of, to make a lot of effort to overcome the possible catastrophe, catastrophic interaction. If everything you know, operates as usual and there is a certain culture and supervision, uh, these losses can be uh, restricted to 2% uh, of the uh, GDP or journal uh, for very heavy catastrophes it's uh, this figure goes up for Russia the evaluations estimation show it's estimated as six to seven uh, percent to losses from GDP on hazardous and technogenic uh, um, uh, catastrophes this natural or or nature generated or uh, techn technogenic catastrophes complicates our life immensely. Even the economic development of this country, we have uh, information about the 1% growth for the year 2013. We are talking about 1.4% of, of growth, but, but we know it advanced that with Anyway, we will lose five to six percent of a percentage on these catastrophes, on these losses. So we can talk about the there is no development at all because we have to talk about the degrading of the system. Uh, Professor Aborosimov said that if we don't change in this sphere, this uh, our views and approaches, we will. Yes, so we we would have at least eight percent growth to compensate for these losses in China, in China. What is going on? The very significant trip to Shanghai. China has their own eight to eleven percent of growth. This country means that this country is going to evolve to develop in the United States. Two three percent, they 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 lose two, but if their growth um, drops, also it is will be hardly possible to talk about development. In the, in the strategies and concepts about the development themselves, these risks, strategic risks, should be uh, treated as the main indicators of the development. Uh, otherwise, all the decisions have become wishful thinking. What has already been done? Uh, yesterday in the Ghost Technodzor, we were talking about uh, how can these risks and the hazards be taken into consideration. We, In order to do it, we, would, uh, we, we should um, realize and adopt some, um, you know, suggestions, suggestions. We have to accept this hierarchy of catastrophes from local to global. We have to know that in each case, in each catastrophe will be accompanied with their hazards worth in thousands, from thousands to billion dollars. We have to know how often this uh, based on the previous experience these situations uh, are generated what is the probability of this situation then we can properly evaluate is estimate the risks and the vertical axis is shown and these risks as we see may reach up to 10 percent of gdp before 
we merge infrastructures, we undertake mega projects, as has been mentioned here. The more we do it, the more we risk uh, the probability of miscalculating the risk, and instead of uh, useful effect, we'll get the tremendous risks. On the right-hand side, you see that when we look at megastructures, we have to imagine that there are simple objects, uh, technically regulated, hazardous, industrial hazards, and critically important strategic objects. Relating it to the central picture, we can see what might expect us. And in order to get out of the situation, on the left-hand side, of it, on the yellow background, you see the types of situation that which we have to analyze and to estimate, to calculate, to regulate, to monitor them. We built our life on the assumption that this and this should be done and then we'll have good life. Well, this motive is still remaining, it's still moving force, but now we set tasks differently. It won't be good. Life won't be good. And as a scientist, as a leader, national or international leader, you have to imagine contingency, you have to have contingency plans. What happens if, what happens if in case of accident, what happens in uh, planned accident, in uh, hypothetic accident, if contingency analysis is not done, then the project should not be implemented or, going beyond, or go beyond the existing infrastructures. There is a certain ideology how to get out of this situation. We are saying that the foundation for such an analysis of future development of infra infrastructural objects uh, for industries and regions should be risk. So what you have to count that you have a probability of getting into unusual, non-standard, dangerous, critically dangerous situation. The risks might can be estimated. As you see here on top, risk might be estimated. It's the multiplied probabilities uh, multiplication, the relative multiplication of uh, probability on the damage caused by its implementation. So this formula said that if you agree that you have a risk, but but you would like to live with acceptable risks, then the current a risk should not be above acceptable limits. How can it be estimated? We've seen the catastrophes, we've seen tech, uh, technogenic catastrophes, natural disasters. So we'd like to prevent what had already happened. So the risks that have materialized themselves, we have to lower them by NR factor and thus set acceptable risk limit. At the end, it said that in order to live within acceptable risks range, we have to undertake a number of steps, scientific, legislative, uh, economical, uh, industrial, etc. That that co that has a cost. Those they have a cost, but these costs might be calculated. Now we can demand these costs to be undertaken based on risk analysis. So this ideology seems to be very important. Three factors are here. Human factor, we understand that the human being, an operator or pilot, turned on something and had fallen asleep. No, human factor, it's not enough. Human factor is, includes science, includes us sitting at the Academy of Sciences and the leaders and uh, managers of all levels were they doing right or wrong? Then technogenic factor, 
which I have described in details, and natural factor, factor of uh, natural disasters, is studied to some extent. There are risk map maps which provide a scientific foundation, economic foundation. And I believe Russia's experience is quite big. We contact with uh, national and international organizations, with uh, other states, so this position is defined. Next slide, please. And at the end, we have a whole line of speakers. I know. I believe this picture in green is the area estimated through through influence of human being nature uh, yellow uh, dangerous states its uh, top uh, outside border are unacceptable states situ unacceptable situations this is modeled in every area of our life this is something we all have to do from we have to leave the red area through yellow one into the green one and keep our infrastructure and our behavior within those limits. Here it is shown how the pr probability of risks uh, increases when with transfer from a regular situation to irregular and catastrophic situation. So the task is to lower this uh, crimson rectangular to make it lower, especially for catastrophe situation of catastrophe. In some cases, like in nuclear power energetics, we have made this, we have stressed it, so that can, can be used. There are certain understanding of how to categorize object and how to manage security on federal level or strategically important objects or objects regulated technically when the owners will uh, be responsible for our safety. There is special structure through United Nations Security Council through research and development uh, branches of Academy of Sciences, strategies, federal programs, uh, industry programs. Uh, this structure is implemented through all the above. So I believe this structure is in place already. Next. Diagnos diagnosis and monitoring systems, uh, monitoring from air, from space, from the earth, surface of the Earth monitoring. This, is a this system is 20 years old. It's still up to date. It's saturated with technical solutions in this area. Now, diagnostic systems include, uh, include natural object. Uh, risk calculation includes the risk of terror attacks. It, it's all in this system new methods of uh, diagnostics including spectral methods are being used it's a new science it's a theory here the power plant on the reactors which russia is built is building uh, all over in other countries science and the ministry for emerging uh, russia for emerging situation creates diagnostic systems we have the one in our institute, uh, which can uh, all different phenomena, different processes are considered risks of different uh, hazards, natural phenomena, fires, uh, wood fires. 
now we're in, in Russia, we have a National Crisis Management Center, the initiative of our president after tsunami in Southeast Asia, you have this unique center here at the top right corner. It's one of the best centers of the kind in the world. And according to the Security Council resolution, we have published 40 volumes security in Russia. There are other publications. So there is theoretical and practical foundation for creating the, the new politics, uh, building our life within the limits of acceptable risk. We'll leave time for discussion, but now I'd like to give the floor to Anatoly Zaitsev. Is he here? While slides are downloaded, I wanted to say the following. This year, the Council of Federation of the Russian Federation had a very important session, important for us. The task force of the Council of Federation was organized. Uh, uh, organized this session, which was dedicated to analysis of threats and risks from space. Three components have been included. Analysis of space objects, Anatoly Vasilievich has mentioned it. Factor number two, danger factor number two, space weather. First of all, the processes on sun on the surface of the sun and its interaction with the earth and our life and the third space hazard is space garbage space waste objects which are coming back from space but are man-made there's a number of uh, resolutions and Anatoly will inform us also will think of what can you offer for our analysis of cosmic risk and hazards. Dear panel, dear Congress, participants, the paper that I present here is dedicated to proving the need of creating international system of global protection from com danger of comets. This paper is based on uh, many years of research by a number of organizations in Russia, uh, in Ukraine and Kazakhstan, and the representatives of these organizations are co-authors of this uh, publication. After the fall of uh, uh, Bolid in Chelyabinsk, no one uh, doubts that there is a probability of bullet falling which may result in unpleasant situation. The past history, recent past and ancient past, there were a number of events. There were different uh, cases from global catastrophe 65 million years ago, 
bullied of Tungus in 1908, and uh, in a few in this century, including the last one in Chelyabinsk, Chebarkul. So you, one can not deny the probability of this happening. There are skeptics who say, give me the name of one person who died from it. Well, recently it has been found that there was such a catastrophe which l resulted in uh, loss of lives. 13,000 years over above North American continent. something exploded in the sky no one could survive so Indian civilization has been destroyed something like that might happen in the nearest future more serious catastrophe is taking place on March fortunately not on Earth you already mentioned March Mars Mars yesterday last uh, the latest research confirmed that Mars had atmosphere, had water. Probably there was life uh, on Mars. Probably even uh, intellectual, was developed intellectual life. But this area, about 2,000 kilometers, bears traces of a strong attack which destroyed Martian at, uh, atmosphere and everything that was on the surface of the red planet. One can hardly uh, argue whether there was not, whether there was intelligent life on Mars or not, but it, it's not proved, but certain object on Martian surface force us to suggest that there was intellectual life. The so-called Martian Sphinx, I believe, it's a monument to the, that gun civilization. Summarizing this part of my presentation, I have to say that Centennial Plan for Improving of Environment, Environmental Protection, which we are discussing here, when implementing it, we should not forget that even relatively small by space scale bolide that will fall on our heads may just destroy all our efforts. So we have to deal with this problem and we can avoid it only by creating a system of planetary protection from cosmic threat. If we could quote Lenin, that every revolution should be able to protect itself, we can, in a similar way, we can say that civilization is worth something if it can pr protect itself. The question, is it possible to protect ourselves from this danger? The answer is positive. Why? According to our research, the project which we offer to your attention is the system of planetary protection, which has to include two tiers. Tier one, short term reaction and long term reaction tier, and also auxiliary services, which I will mention later. Let's talk about the short-term reaction tier. Most of the asteroids and nucleus of comets have a size from tens of meters to hundreds of meters. Probably 99.9% .9 of all space objects which threaten us. The it's, uh, there is a very small chance to identify them years ahead. Therefore, we suggest to organize uh, short-term response 
tier which will identify the threat within a few days. It should consider, it should consist of. First of all, the terrestrial service for identifying, discovering, and identifying this object. It should be a single all, all global system, and the other segment is a protection. Two segments, eastern and the western segments, east and west, uh, which would in include the intelligence discovering and uh, recap of these uh, issues and uh, the service of uh, the man so center for planetary protection so next slide please how is it going to work this um, operative protection we have to discover hazardous object so the service of discovering it's a uh, so we have to have sky sky telescope, which can uh, determine or identify this object. After discovering it, next slide, we we uh, started this um, object. We send the uh, intelligence object uh, the flying apparatus into sky space, which will tell us the everything about this object, such as the trajectory, size. A shape, uh, substances, it's complicated. And uh, based on this, we will decide on how to affect, how to uh, um, affect it. And after this, after this decision, so there are some um, apparatus which can catch it in the, in the space. Uh, so with the effect of the gene, uh, gen genetic or the nuclear uh, eff effect. Both are te techno technologies already in, in, exist in existence. With the help of this uh, res speed response, we can protect, we can ensure that this planet can be protected from the objects in size from, uh, from tens to hundreds meters in diameter. Uh, their number goes up to 99.5% of all the objects which can attack the planet. Next slide. Um, apart from the level of the operating uh, response, we have to select uh, create some services uh, which will pro which will f predict or forecast where the object is going to es es estimate where the object is going to fall. And if it is the agent, uh, if it is the object approaching us, which is going to fall where there is no big towns or whatever, we have to predict where it is going to, uh, the, the, the amount of uh, loss, the amount of, um, and in ministry, the EMERCOM, in, Ministry for Emergency Situation to evacuate the population and the hazardous industrial objects from the, from this area. Talk to the if they to to warn the population about the coming uh, the coming uh, objects to prevent the damage caused by the broken glass or whatever. They are doing this work nowadays. The Ministry of Emergency Situations have realized this hazard, and on the, under the auspices of this ministry, uh, the group is uh, developing a special apparatus complex which will enable to model the hazardous processes and to try to mitigate and uh, the losses um, uh, produced by them second the service for the regional protection it is, looks like fun, something fantastic, something imaginative, but uh, based on the estimation from our military specialists, what is possible to say, to use is the means of the uh, space um, defense, where they are located. But it is, the, of course, the, the point of the future. Military specialists say that to argue that it is this task can be specified as a supplementary service. This can be used while creating this protection system, protective system. So, uh, 
summarizing, I want to say that we have all the basic technologies to create the level of operative response in several years, in five to seven years. Uh, what is, isn't there, political will, uh, who will realize, the politicians should realize that the task or the objective to the task to protect the planet Earth from the space hazards. Next slide. Protection from larger objects uh, with sizes that start from several many kilometers in, in diameters, uh, comet nucleus which can uh, um, estimate uh, tens kilometers, dozens kilometers in length, which can uh, in emerge in the solar system from very distant um, areas of the universe. It is still beyond our possibilities, but the, the, this system will be based on the superpower rocket carriers, the cosmic the nuclear, with nuclear engines, so the powerful um, engines. It's a serious work which is in front for us. Next slide. And in this case, this asteroid hazard, this asteroid threat, it's a unique um, opportunity for the mankind in to, if we take it seriously, it may become uh, the, you know, the motivation for the uh, technical progress. During the Cold War, the competition between the East and West uh, was leading to development of new technologies, including sky technologies, and the result, the space flights uh, started. So next slide. If we unite under the ideas of protection from the external enemy, we would be able to create a cosmic shields, space shields, which could come up with new technologies and to improve, significantly improve the political climate on this planet. So what I have told you now today, it's, you know, in this shape of a conceptual note and called in the title International System of the Planetary Defense, signed by the by some authorities from Ukraine, Russia, and Kazakhstan, who took part or contributed to the development of this concept. We are very grateful to, would be grateful to other organizations or countries which would provide their support. Next slide. And in conclusion, I want to say what? Modern technologies enable us to practically integrate the tasks of uh, to protect the planet from the cosmic and this asteroid and comet uh, um, hazards. Probably we, we can plan to create the citadel, the planetary assist protection system. It should be um, enjoy the contribution from um, scientific and financial help from the whole um, global community. And in addition to the address, uh, to the supplement, the address which has already been uh, prepared, the proposed by our forum to add point two in the. The proposed wording is that taking into consideration that it is a proven that there is evidence of the proven hazards for the planet Earth to, from comets and other spice dangers, uh, which can uh, destroy our planet, uh, combined with the um, already existing technologies to combat these hazards, we. Um, it's worth starting uh, planning and designing such system. We can just address it at the level, at the UN level, to G8, to G20 um, countries or BRICS. So such address was passed to the organizing committee. If you all agree, we can, you can use it to, in the course of preparing the uh, final documents. 
I have a proposal. Probably we will listen to the presentation of Professor Corley in the global problems of the informatics of civilization. Then I wanted to ask uh, Professor Vishnikov, and probably during the general discussions to ask questions and to discuss what we have already heard. Dear participants of the section, dear, dear ladies and gentlemen, foreign guests, I'm very it's much enjoy about, you know, um, pleased after to talk about Professor Zaitsev, but I wanted to draw our attention to some results of the systemic analysis of some global threats um, to the development of civilization in the 21st century. I would take up on the structure and the content of the global high, global threats, uh, come up with some recommendations and conclusions, and some forecasts for the future. I'm holding in my hand a monography which is entitled The World in the Year 2000, the, the volume of the collection of the world forecasts. This book was published in Russia, then Soviet Union, 40 years ago, written by two famous German uh, uh, scientists uh, with all accuracy. They generalized the, the results of the, the results of the prognostic uh, for, um, research in order, available to them in order to draw the image of the world for the year 2000, they formulated uh, 10 not, not problems which pre predicted to emerge by the year 2000. Look at the first one. Number one was education and upbringing. To regret, to, I want to admit, I can confess to you, I saw it as somewhat uh, Artificial people of my generation remember when the 1973 faced the real hazard of the nuclear war between the USSR and the USA, or, and why uh, this was the first the, the priority was given to this stuff. And when I got familiar with this book, I realized why it was so. The the reasons were such that at the brink of the third century, the world is going to change so rapidly that people would lose the um, understanding of what is going on. And in this situation, only education and upbringing will give uh, appropriate questions for two, three uh, comments, uh, uh, questions about what I should know, how I should behave, and what I can help for. Today, these questions are facing all, everybody in this planet in all their simplicity and nakedness. Really, indeed, the world is changing so rapidly, and these changes are so dynamic during the last uh, 20 years. It, it, the world has become the more interconnected, dynamic, unpredictable, and dangerous. From this uh, chair, he already said that the end can uh, come any time, plus minus uh, 2025. I made an attempt to imagine what problems are faced the, with the world today, and this uh, have grown the number in number and in intensity of the, and they are about 50. And I only specify those who provide the global danger, global threat for the mankind, and um, classified into two, put in them, distinguished into two, three clusters. Nature is the hazards of geophysical, biospheric, and cosmological character. Second cluster is society, and the third is man, human being. This is the nature cluster of threats. I'm not going to mention all of them, but 
They are quite understandable. I want to focus on the last one, on the last part of the we heard about the asteroid threats, but there is another uh, threat which was sort of it's animal soul activity. You know that due to unknown reasons, the traditional 11-year uh, cycle, sun cycle, and two colossal blow, blows uh, in the on sun, uh, which extracted a huge amount of plasma, which luckily has luckily uh, missed our planet. But can you imagine if it if it um, it reached our planet? Can you imagine just for a second that all computers, all networks, all electronic devices and system uh, of which we absolutely are dependent, absolutely dependent on, with information civilization in line with benefits that it's bringing, it makes us uh, totally dependent on them. The external memory of the mankind is <coughs> mainly represented on the digital carriers. Uh, not on it's on all levels. Uh, individual memory of all of us. Uh, recently, I had a com my computer crashed, and I lost everything which was uh, in my electronic mail. And I, you know, thought it would be much better than, uh, you know, ever all my belongings were taken. And what is going to happen in ten years? It can happen any minute. As a result. The country will be thrown 50, at least 50 years back. And for the reason, I don't know what reason, this problem is never discussed. No measures are taken. And it can happen tomorrow or the day after. And in a week's time, it's real. If uh, Are there any methods to uh, combat this? There are methods of... Uh, deciphering, uh, coding, whatever. There is a, com should have a complex analysis of the problem, systemic analysis and uh, a proper prioritization. Because asteroid, of course, dangerous. Uh, it whether comes or not, but this um, explosion cannot be predicted. Then the cluster problem is called under the general title of society. I want you to focus on only to, to the lower part of this list. It's starting from information wars, threat of the virtualization of the society. When, when ideal is uh, wants to pass for the real, everybody is talking about the financial crisis. What happened? Oh, asteroid hit the earth, or the volcano erupted, or, you know, come as uh, airlines from the plan other planets or the systems uh, landed on us. What's the crisis about? Because it's a handmade. Several, several bankers made a treaty and did it all for us. And we're seriously talking about it. And mines are, you know, the, 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 oil, the oil fields are still producing oils. What is it? When wishful thinking is uh, they made an attempt to pass it for, uh, for reality. Another very important um, hazard is decrease in educational level. Just to look at it, this factor has objective reasons. It's like growing, the population grows on account of those countries where uh, the, the society is still. Uh, the level of education is still low. During the last 12 years, uh, more than one billion added to, or illiterate people added to the population. Or, uh, sub so the general level of education goes down in the face of global hazards. hazards. <coughs> but there are other, other reasons. The level of education is going down in developed countries, in Russia, for example. I'll give an example from the latest sociological survey. This year, 35% of Moscow schools are convinced 
that sun is going around the earth. Last year, such the, this number was 28 or 30 in the 2011-28. So it's growing very fast. I expected 32, but it was 35. But the problem is not only in this. This fact hasn't become uh, uh, hasn't become a subject for have massive education, not in the mass media, not the round table, but but this problem calls for the Security Council. Sun goes round the earth. Can you imagine? And it is in the enlightened society of the Russian. Now, next hazard, another hazard, another danger is the hazard danger of the new, of a probability of a new world void. So probability is estimated as 30 percent. And it is not disseminating of the mass uh, weapon because this becomes more powerful. The, uh, the armies of this, of the, uh, the army of the developed countries is much more powerful than their defending capacities. Uh, the developed countries are uh, pro providing the armies with the latest weapons, with new types of weapons. They are listed in this psychotronic, including psychotronic weapons. Another hazard is um, that the growing, increasing growth of the global problems calls for the or requires a transition to new technological mode, but the consciousness, the consciousness the, uh, is, is not understood, not realized, and there are no teachers to teach people, and the most acute problem is the pedagogical education. Now let's look at the cluster under the title of uh, human being, man. I build it uh, under the following priority. First, intellectual degradation of the personality. But what is more important is moral de uh, degrade degrading. Then generation gap in science, education, and high technologies. There is nobody we can pass. We could pass our knowledge to. My generation is going. The middle, medium generation is in business, and junior, you know, the junior generation cannot even concentrate on this, their concentration and load. Who are we leaving our planet to? And isn't it, isn't, hasn't the time come to think about it? And finally, there are, there is a research, certain research, that the biological changes and the structure of the human brain is under the, in the transition. I have a monography written by the specialist, two specialists in the age psychology, which who managed to show that if a child from early childhood spends a lot of time in front of the monitor of the TV screen or computer, uh, they, they fit, they, its brain their brain failed to form the neurons of the cell so while witnessing the um, appearing of a new emerging of a new race. They're fully convinced that at the age of up to two years old, children, children shouldn't watch TV even a minute a day. What are the consequences going to be? Clip way of thinking, inability to concentrate, multifunctionality. I thought that uh, it will reach Russia in five to seven years because we are behind the West, but it's already here. Two years ago, two, two weeks ago, I have listened to the presentation by the Mrs. Vladimirova from the Moscow State University. They uh, studied Russian school kids ages 12 to 14 setting tasks stay 18 hours without gadgets. Those who can't should write down the reason why. More than five hours were able just uh, just two people do it. Others of a group of 70, others uh, had developed high blood pressure, temperature, etc. So the children were shocked. They said, are we addicted to it? 
Six volunteers repeated experiment. They survived 16 hours without gadgets, but they say it was very difficult for them. So there's a problem already here in Russia, but psycho psychologists do not treat this issue, this problem, because it uh, has arisen unexpectedly, because the development of informational society goes so rapidly at such a pace that we do not believe that this information era is already here. Spiritual and moral crisis. I'd like to draw your attention to some documents. The last uh, encyclica of uh, Pope John Paul II, the forum that has gathered in 2002, uh, 2010, uh, 1500 experts. They have adopted declaration of the forum con stating the threat, but they didn't create a roadmap to go to overcome this threat. So the threat is known, but what to do is not is unknown. Just three uh, paragraphs from the declaration. Aggressive ignoramity is brought up now. Aggressive ignoramity. generation problem. I call it intellectual security problem. Are there ways to resolve this issue? Yes, there are. First of all, we have to work with children. We have to protect them from this. We have to try to develop their intellect on, at early stages, which is now done in Japan, where they now have uh, introduced at school calculation lessons, calculation classes, uh, in Armenia, where they teach chess at schools, but this is not a state policy. The teacher and the scientist, a teacher and the scientist, these are two figures of paramount importance who have to become most respected figures in the society, including social respect. Five conclusions, not a pleasant ones, not comforting conclusions. The crisis of global civilization is growing. Global problems uh, work in synergy, increasing each other. Many of them are not understood and are not studied. The main problem is not economic nor political. It is in humanitarian area, humanitarian field. It's a destructive activity of man is the main threat. So the man is not only uh, the, the object to be protected, but it's also the main risk factor of the modern society. We have already seen irreversible changes in biosphere and in the world ocean. Gulf Stream problem alone uh, is an illustration of it. The most important is strategic factor to strategic factor to provide global security science education and culture are being destroyed and are being destroyed on purpose. The key issue of spiritual values is just declaration and is not resolved. For the last 20 years, I do not see any changes to the better in this direction. Some, what is this conclusion? 20 years after the Rio de Janeiro conference, there were no working s um, steps out of crisis. Time has gone, and our chances for survival of civilization are melting rapidly. According to some forecasts, the end might come in the middle of the 21st century, maybe earlier. There were no uh, exact estimates, all those supercomputers of today allow to build an exact model. Here are some uh, publications on this matter, on the topic of this presentation. I believe that the declaration, that the resolution of this forum to create Global the International Academy of Global Studies to consider this issue. This academy should include global education. This is a very important step, but I believe that
both both global threats which I've named should be subject to monitoring. I did not name uh, such a problem, uh, such an issue as healthcare. I, it doesn't mean that the healthcare is not an issue. Just try to identify the most dangerous. We had done this research in Academy of Sciences. We have met. We do not have methodology for monitoring of global threats. There was an attempt to create a system for monitoring of national security. There is no methodology. So this is also a science and methodological challenge. Therefore, colleagues, time is running out. And I suggest we should not we should consider not just monitoring of social situa emergency situation, but also monitoring of global threat. Thank you for your attention. I thank Professor Colin for the integrating presentation. Thank you. Now we have time for questions and answers and discussion. Your question, please. Dear colleagues, I have spoken yesterday. I've said, I've gave the answer to this straightforward question and quite a well-founded question. I've shown this book. This book contains the concept for solution. I would like to go deeper and to make this question even more accurate. The global threat comes from ourselves, from the existing educational system, from our science, from the, our philosophy, etc. Why? Because the entire civilization is oriented against nature, but not just physically or technically. It is oriented by our brains, which are built on rationally segmented knowledge. And this uh, subject subjectively segmented knowledge which we uh, education which we got uh, which we give to our children turns a person into egoistic creature fighting against nature so the task is of fundamental and paramount of poor importance but it can be resolved why because this segmented knowledge this fragmented knowledge can be and it's part of oriental and Russian traditions to be to, to be turned into a live knowledge it's not my invention 50, uh, 150 years ago, Solovyov and other Russian philosophers spoke about live, living knowledge. In, in the Orient, there is no notion of or living knowledge, but all the knowledge there is living. Confucius had the living knowledge, but now the Oriental countries are also falling we dangerous Western way. Western culture has huge potential. This is living capital, living knowledge. It's in art, but art is pushed uh, on the backstage. Science also contains living knowledge, but it's dismembered and fragmented. It can be united, can be agglomerated, because the agglomeration of sciences creates living knowledge. It's a simple solution, but this solution has uh, to be understood as a revolution, creative revolution in our minds and the representatives of science. Altogether, we are creating this living knowledge. Uh, There's a powerful tool to resolve these issues. Self-perfection of a man as the creator of life. It's a simple way out, but it's easy to say, but uh, very difficult to implement, to turn a person from a consumer of nature into a creator of nature. The notion of a creator of nature, of a person, of human being as a creator of nature is part of Russian and Oriental culture, which has in its core the parental, uh, parental uh, core. If we are already children for the nature, we can become its parents as well. It's the same natural process as a child grows and starts 
feeding his parents and start providing for his parents. This is part of our culture. Conflict of culture is not the conflict of civilizations. Cultural clash is a result in the fact that they lost the culture that lost the clash becomes a winner as well. There is no animosity between culture. There is uh, inner fight between civilizations because they are aggressive, They're aggressive because of subject knowledge, because formal logic, uh, which is uh, opposite to uh, living logic. There is oriental wisdom, which harmoniously uh, sets people into the nature. It can become a cause of heat. There are solutions. Let's create a committee. I am ready to take upon myself a burden. I understand it's a very heavy burden, but the group, our group of 10, is ready to participate in this committee. It does not contradict to what Yuri Vladimirovich has said and done. It's in addition to what has been done, to the huge work that has been done. But let's pay respect to the positive we have. Our group has proposed this positive uh, beginning, but I don't see any positive response. We are proving that we have to understand civilization as a step toward the creation of cr culture of the culture of creative life. Then civilization is not something wrong. Civilization has a potential, powerful potential, but the notion of civilization has its disadvantages, which are rational usage. That means killing nature, fighting nature, starting from Aristotle. Life is a fight, but life is a struggle. But just for early uh, Hellenistic civilization, for the West, for the East, it's harmony with nature, persons should live within the nature, together with nature, and as a creature of nature, creature of nature. There are options for solutions. They are quite obvious, but one has to treat them with utmost attention. Thank you. Thank you. Mikhail Vasilich, you are the next, and then you. Dear colleagues, after such interesting presentations, having powerful historical and philosophical background, my presentation might seem quite regular because I'll tell you how do we make transition from real natural system of development of modern technologies and modern technological systems to creation of global challenges, a very quite dangerous global challenge, which can be resolved by global methods. We have discussed this with Nikolai Andreevich, you remember it. Uh, unfortunately, there are no representatives from the Minister of Emergency Situations, but I have discussed it at sessions at the Minister for Emergency Situations, and the last time it has been discussed at the seminar not NATO Russia in Moscow, seminar on intellectual and technological terrorism and how to combat it. You'll understand now, I will not uh, say at length what has been discussed, and what was the problem, but if just to briefly define the problem, you as people who live surrounded by large systems, information communication systems, you clearly understand that no information and communication system in any country can be created without international cooperation. Give me one example, one country where a powerful information communication system has been built from the components of this country alone. As a rule, it's international cooperation, and here is the root of evil. If people were as good as it sounded in this, in today's presentations, calling, they say that we have to know that we have to know what we should know and how should we act and what can we hope for. Well, this would be wonderful. 
if each person would follow the realistic answers to these questions. Unfortunately, it's, it's not the fact. In conditions of high-scale animosity, most information communication systems bear in inherent inbuilt risks and vulnerability, be it part of construction or maintenance. That means that in the territory of your potential enemy or economic competitor, these systems can be easily activated from space or they work as uh, magnet sea mines where well, after it will let certain number of ships go and explodes on under the 21st one for example how do these uh, vulnerabilities work either these systems are out of order or they start misfunctioning malfunctioning it is especially dangerous where it's a combination of automatic system with the dispatcher work because a dispatcher has certain rules prior to disconnecting the system. Automatic system usually disconnects, is disconnected if something goes wrong immediately. So this duplication that has this, uh, that is available in space and on Earth does not work in such cases. So huge catastrophes, which the Kalandrevich has mentioned in a number of cases, could be caused by such effect. International researchers of sec security agencies, they deal with these issues. And in many cases, it's not a loss of nature, but just uh, human irresponsibility. It would not be so dangerous, because sometimes potential enemy does not become an enemy. Sometimes it becomes, it becomes a companion, friend, etc. But there is international terrorism. People who are pursuing their immediate interest, they need today to get someone out of jail or to transfer money somewhere. So they find out vulnerabilities from the companies about the presence of these vulnerabilities and how can they be uh, put into function. And they make ultimatums to states and companies do this or that, otherwise will spoil your communication system. One can overcome it only on global level. National protection here is useless. What can be done at global level? I'm coming to the main thesis, and I would like to end with this thesis. On a global level, one can only increase responsibility of companies manufacturing these systems these systems, transferring components and providing providing and provide maintenance. That means anonymous foundation of all these systems should be founded. So the state or the company getting a signal from uh, terrorists that they might hurt the system might question this anonymous foundation. Can they guarantee there is no such risk of vulnerability? If the answer is there is no vulnerability, the terrorists get no. Therefore, terrorists get uh, terrorists lose their main weapon. Such a foundation does not exist yet. It has to be created. Therefore, we need international agreement on a very high level. This is the next step, that very next step, which was mentioned today by many speakers here. It's not bullied, it's not asteroid. It is something that's next to us daily. And we create on a daily basis uh, by, by not creating international responsibility, by not moving to this direction. We create favorable conditions for international terrorism. You understand? It's already, it's very human. It's, again, education, culture, and high responsibility. Thank you. Alexander Ivanovich had the floor. Well, we had a feeling. 
that you have scared the audience so much by horrors of emerging situation, accidents, asteroids, have an easy feeling in order to restore the balance we would like. The president of global or of uh, organization of global civilization on promotion on global organization for civil uh, for new civilization has to understand that even if uh, in China the life will become hard for him uh, in Russia he is always welcome and as a sign of it as a token of it we are giving him a special souvenir uh, uh, souvenir it's our Russian samovar but the tea the tea should be from China this is how civilization is developed I'd like to say the following. Я уже познакомился с местными традициями, познакомился с местным населением. И сейчас у меня будет возможность вернуться в Китай с таким прекрасным подарком. Спасибо большое президиуму, спасибо большое организаторам конференции. Также благодарю всех, всех организаций, которые принимали участие в соответствии организации данного конгресса. Спасибо большое. Юрий Владимирович, with great attention and great alarm, when listening to uh, the President Kolin's uh, uh, report, uh, who presented a classification of real uh, threats, uh, not uh, coming uh, from space, but coming from, uh, from human race, from man himself, because now Homo sapiens, which exists for 25,000 years, after Neanderthal man, Homo sapiens came into critical phase, which may result in termination of life cycle, not from outside reasons, but from inner reasons. Because the response to new threats is inadequate, new threats created by man. Our task now is not just to classify the threats, but to facilitate mankind to help mankind to understand the sum of these threats and to develop adequate response therefore i suggest to initiate recommendations for the united nations to create based on international treaty and after the discussion the un the ga to create global system of monitoring forecasting and react response to emergency situation such an attempt has been taken in 1971 there was a decision made a department and secretariat has been created there is a deputy of secretary general of the UN uh, for reaction to natural disasters this was the first attempt at that time, some money was allocated. So far, the uh, structure is inefficient. It works. Thank you for it. But but the structure is inadequate to a sum total of increasing threats that have been discussed here. The second attempt has been done by the European Union. Uh, 
includes two civilizations, Western European and Eastern European. Uh, now tr part of Eurasian civilization is trying to join, and Muslim civilization is trying to join. So Eura European Union has gone far along this way. You have materials describing the creation of European center, having much bigger resources, where they uh, make drills and test this technology and this reaction. But this cannot be resolved on the level of Europe, especially that Europe is now on declining stage. Declining stage, if you look at its share in the world population, it used to be 25%. Now it becomes 7%. And this 7% include more and more Muslim population. So with all their promotion of same-sex marriages, etc., it's delayed suicide of Western European civilization. So I do not think we'll be able to create such global structure on the European basis. There is an understanding of it because of the number of natural disasters, natural technogenic of Fukushima, which united both factors, uh, to creating a horrible hybrid. In order to do it, we have to, one, clearly understand the threat and sign uh, an international treaty like uh, MAGATE or the Treaty on Chemical Weapons. This danger is not less probable uh, than nuclear tests or nuclear uh, weapons. Next, we have to create within the United Nations uh, structure within uh, together within the global um, environmental protection organization. We have to create a system of monitoring which will unite all existing monitoring systems, space monitoring, but not only space uh, surface monitoring, seismic monitoring, air monitoring. We have suggested creating a Eurasian center in Kazakhstan, uh, named after Vernatsky, because there, in, in, there he worked prior to the Second World War. Currently, we have lots of data, huge amount of data but they're not studied, not systematic. Scientists are arguing whether it's global warming or global cooling or when the cooling will become warming. But the real trends are threatening. So based on observations, we have to develop uh, reliable methods of forecasting long-term forecast, medium-term forecast, and short-term forecast, and operative forecast. Because when Medvedev was in Chelyabinsk, and the bullet had fallen unexpectedly, even the short-term warning system didn't work. Only scientists should be involved. Bureaucrats are unable to do it according to their status. We have to develop a system reacting on the te technical catastrophes which happened in the kind of Philipp Philippines or in the Gulf of Mexico and so on and so forth. Not by demonstrations of Greenpeace, but through creation of technically validated system. So within the reach, one can, and using modern technical facilities to help to relieve the effects of any catastrophe. But this requires creating a task force which is able to react to such situation 
not by delegating from national systems, but through creation of a global monitoring uh, center, which will in have centers all over the world and observation centers. Because in New Uringoy, we had a conference. A Nobel Prize winner, Derek Callaghan, who with Albert Gore together got Nobel Prize for environmental efforts, he said, what did you do? You have destroyed, except for military bases, we have destroyed meteorological observation network in Arctics. And that's where the weather is cooked. That's where the source of all weather changes. We need the system, thorough system of observation that will require creating a scientific center distributed center. This will be one of the tasks of Academy that we are creating now to develop scientific and methodological base uh, for systematic studies and making forecast of the, all the threats. So I believe that Professor Colin, when he was speaking, I thought that we'll ask him to do it uh, as a head of, together with Akayev, and we'll be able to offer something realistic because as the Moiseev's experience shows, one can influence world policy if you present it clearly and convincingly. We need to have technical means. That's to, that means to develop innovations needed for implementation of this task. And we have two, which was right, justly mentioned here. We need educational system. That's a huge threat. We are now facing a generation change in from 2011 to 2030. There will be a new generation, generation of the 20s, which has to respond to the threats generated by the generation of the 90s, but they are not ready at large. They are unprepared to accept and to re and to develop and implement strategic activity. Such situation of such type requires strategic activity. Therefore, our goal is, that's why we call this academy scientific research and education. We open the university and I have written textbook for the leaders of the new generation entitled Global Strategy of Sustainable Development based on the partnership of civilization. But it's a very narrow circle. We have to make a breakthrough as scientists, as educators, but as Vernadsky has said, every scientist is an educator, and the real educator has to be a scientist. So this is our, our task of this meeting. And we said we'll create branches in Beijing, in Indonesia, where the sixth form of civilization alliance will take place. We suggest to have a round table on civilization education I have signed the paper delegating the create, right to create such a center in Munich, Germany. There are centers in Arab countries in Ukraine and Kazakhstan. We need an explosion. We need an explosion that will deliver to the new generation the uh, danger of the new threats that we realize and the reaction on to the threats and to make them real innovators able to respond to some total of technologies or uh, as we would say to some total of all the risks that mankind faces now it requires systematic re approach so i have a concrete suggestion uh, summarizing our session let's agree that will recruit the presenters, 
together with representatives of the Ministry for Emergency Situation, and we delegate them with a mission to, pre, to, do, to present a letter to the Secretary, Secretary General of the United Nations and a report for international scientific community. So next time, when we convene in Beijing in May, we can include it into a global value system. We can do it earlier because now the system of goals is set. And let's try to get support from our far-thinking decision makers in Russia, China, Kazakhstan, and other countries. I think Ukraine will join. Uh, recognizing the risks will join, and other countries in order to through systematization of risks, develop pro course of actions, a roadmap for uh, five to 10 years. Probably, probably we have to set a goal of Rio plus 30. So we have to develop program which is adequate to some total of the risks in order to change the trajectory, to change the course, because the current course bring, uh, carries us straight to the abyss. Homo sapiens becomes less and less sapiens. We need more of a sapiens. This is the real weight of the Nosphere, because it is two-sided, creative and destructive. We can destroy by our intellect our existence on this fragile earth, but we can also recognize the risks, unite our efforts, and include the energy of our mind and action, and to change the course. So let's state it in our recommendation, and we'll talk about it tomorrow, and let's organize probably in five months, in four months, probably by May, we should have convincing document. Because our weak spot is that the, there is a gap between science, and not only a source, but between science and mass media. Without internet, without uh, TV, we cannot deliver it to younger generations. Don't read thick books. They don't, it's not that they don't understand that if whether the uh, Earth is rotating around the Sun or Sun around the Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, callers, let me introduce myself, the head of the Chair the Moscow State University of Forestry and Team Bomb. Today and yesterday, a lot was said about the prospective hazards, and uh, and in this respect, I remember comes easily comes to my memory the talks we used to lead, uh, the similar the same issue on the previous jubilee. Uh, of Vernadsky, 125, 5th anniversary of uh, Akademishan Vernadsky, the presentation given by Vladimir Kupcov, which was then one published in 1990, uh, in the article, uh, whether the mankind isn't going to die from reason. Um, teaching of Svernatsky and Shklovsky, Viktor Osip Samilich, in the magazine Zimla and Vselenna, stressed not only the danger of, but tried to um, uh, justify the irretrievable, unavoidable, unavoidable death of the civilization which reaches high level of civilization of, of uh, technological development comparing it to optimistic point by Vernadsky, who used to say in his book, Scientific Thought as a Planetary 
uh, entity. So he even then knew about the approaching barbarity, and I think he said he's he thinks these um, views are the result of not uh, in the incomplete penetration into the real into the environment. North sphere cannot bring to the result uh, contrary to the geological processes. The, uh, it is. Um, respect to its creation. This imperative uh, is built on the unavoidable laws of noospheric um, development. Professor Kupsov said <coughs> that today we cannot, like Vernadsky, ignore the alarming symbol signs of self-destroyal of, of mankind. I don't think that there is uh, there is neither dying from reason or trans uh, transferring into the kingdom of reason. It is uh, the truth in the middle. The truth is somewhere in the middle. A lot depends on the morality, dignity, and whatever, education of the mankind itself. But it is the philosophical, moral point of view. <coughs> but not in... It's, it's not enough uh, relying on science, as it demand was demanded by Vernadsky. <coughs> uh, but even then, there were in existence the global models and the f uh, foundations for building the um, apocalyptic models. During the past five years, these hazards are scientifically uh, explained from the scientific point of view. We see that Nosphere itself uh, is generated not only by the scientific reason, but also the spirituality and morality of a, of a person, of a human being. The spirituality becomes the subject of not only philosophical and ethical um, uh, researches, but such humanitarian ones as interdisciplinary research, which can serve as a convincing proofs, as a confirmation for, uh, as a theoretical calculations. There are such approaches which make humanitarian sciences more and more uh, based on evidence or uh, but at the same time, the, the science itself, having overcome the situation of its end, becomes not the reflection of the uh, reality, but again, the, as it was found by Jean, our philosopher Shvedov, the subject of the cell process itself. So what we have to talk about, the scientific thought is, is, is born not only by biological, geological, and space factors, but also by spiritual facts. And in this respect, we are finding even in Hindernaski heritage some approaches to what already was taught here as um, the life knowledge. It is, it's not subjective, but also a positive knowledge, the knowledge which integrates scientific, uh, philosophers, and critical approaches. Thank you very much. What you know, I feel Ravzimich has tackled upon. We will see the address from the Minister of Emergency. We can introduce a Maxim Zaiko, I represent the International Department of Emercom of Russia, a Minister of Emergency. I would like to bring a little bit, a little of positive uh, approach to. Uh, once again, I'm Mike Simzai call representing the Emergency Ministry of the Russian Federation. I would like, on uh, behalf of my organization, to add some positive paint into this um, gloomy picture of the world. Currently, in the year 2012, at the summit of the heads of the uh, Asian uh, Pacific Ocean regions, Russian 
uh, delegation presented the initiative on the building the system of prevention, the crisis situation. The 2012, uh, this initiative was not pre uh, was not presented. It was born in the MR emergency ministry much uh, long before that. We made attempts to bring it to international attention within the framework of G4, G8. But, uh, but, but by then, uh, they didn't show the signs of understanding. But uh, by now, some shifts uh, have uh, happened we, uh, um, to the better. We treat them as the better. But this year, we're continuing to push this initiative together with the uh, directorate of the OM responsible for humanitarian issues. They presented in Brussels this, this initiative in Brussels. At the, at the global level, but so far, there is, and we have achieved the understanding that this intercommunication, um, uh, one of the first steps were done, were made in the Pacific Asian Ocean because it is the largest region and which uh, is known, uh, famous for an, a large number of natural um, disasters, like the latest one in Philippines, which called for the interconnection, uh, inter-cooperation um, of all international forces. We make a lot of effort. We contribute to bring this to perfection. Not everybody still understands what, what we need it for. There was a heated discussion uh, recently about the practical implications of this. I, we had to we had to explain uh, what has been presented by many presenters. Uh, it was very difficult to to justify, and so we have to save this network of interaction, and we're trying to make some practical steps to some joint protocols, come on the communication protocols, interaction protocols, inter-cooperation protocols. The, the understanding is coming, increasingly coming. The problems which have been discussed here today. Recently, there was a Russian NATO seminars. The representatives of NATO, for the first time, uh, called this this blow ups in the in the sun, <coughs> which deadly affects the um, both the Earth climate. They are unpredictable. They called it. Yeah, they showed serious attention to it. We have up to 38, not more than 38 hours to bring down some um, systems. They provided with us with the some calculations that um, if it happens without appropriate protection, the largest cities of the planet become. Uh, uh, will be in absolute case, and the consequences will be absolutely uncompared uh, with what we have seen before. From the international community, we need a lot of help <coughs> because the global view on this, all this, uh, there are seminars on the space, uh, space weather, other problems, but we have to come up with a global approach. We are in favor of it if this initiative such as supported about building the uh, global cooperation between crisis centers. Because to build something new, it's problematic to do something from scratch. We want to use the already existing uh, facilities on the level of uh, interaction between Russia and the US. This work is being done. We entered into a number of uh, agreements with different countries with, between the Ministry of Emergency and all the same <coughs> with the U.S. Uh, they are very much interested in this problematics on this uh, asteroid uh, uh, hazard. But there are some complications, of course, because everything is all, uh, some, all, something is still banned. People are keeping the international the 
confidential secrets. But if we manage to uh, unite, put it all together under the auspices, under the umbrella of UN, the emergency minister of Russia will appreciate it immensely. Dear colleagues, dear guests, Vladimirovich, Nikola Andreevich, we are all tired already. What I'm going to say, it's probably the last presentation today, hopefully, yes. That's why I'll try to be as short as I can and as clear as I can. If you, if you remember, recent, in the past, in the recent past, it was a phrase uh, always pronounced by, by our authorities that where they never told us that we were going to live well, but we promised you would be living better. What we are talking about today, what we are proposing, what is being prop suggested and proposed, it is the result of the lengthy discussion and um, which took place um, for lengths of time, the depths of thinking can't be compared to what was shown uh, the, on the, the first uh, Global co Congress. I would be to take the, so the section which is uh, were present here today uh, must be the first one, though the way everybody else would uh, switch uh, to uh, closer to the economic and social economics analysis, because what is going on in the modern world is so dangerous, is so hazardous. Uh, but you know, we have heard so much today that life is uh, loses its sense, but life is brilliant nevertheless. But uh, except what we can do, everything we can to keep it uh, as such. So the elements of um, what has elaborated is in, uh, <coughs> targeted at all the risks or mitigating the risk. If we say we need the political will, don't we see that the authorities of this country or of other countries reasonably, deliberately, on the daily basis, is searching for the opportunity to solve all the different situations? Uh, no, not, all, not always can be done by making a proper decisions only. Everybody should st uh, start from the objective and task and opportunities they, pers they uh, at their disposal, uh, such as Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, Minister of Economics, our forum, Minister of um, Emergency, which suggested various um, uh, fields for, for communication. I would well like to uh, suggest something else which can be pinched or by, picked up by our authorities of our countries. It is such, the first always. You know about over the uh, blue, blue helmets of, of uh, United Nations, which are solving some political, um, sharp political issues in different countries all over the globe, these uh, uh, blue uh, blue helmets are acting under the auspices of the United Nations. They fully, they're in full, in full decide. In spite of the fact how few they are, they solve significantly, uh, significant and very fast uh, solutions to peacemaking. Can it we go follow this way and create this system? I don't know what kind of helmets, what color of helmets for emergency ministry. I don't know them. I think serious helmets are permanent, permanently acting forces, units of Emercom, uh, uh, because the the nature uh, can provide it with such surprises. Uh, we cannot hide um, and, so, and under the jurisdiction of the United Nations, they should create the teams of uh, spot, s s fast response to some different situations. 
in order to solve the problems which emerge. Um, and then this is different from those risks which suggest suggested by nature. I attentively read the uh, letters uh, and addresses which suggested they were all proposed to the attention of our government. We must be, you know, courageously introduce these proposals into our address to the government, to the um, um, to United Nations and to the heads of the departments with whom we are uh, dealing with, are going to cooperate with the contact. And the last, it's impossible, we shouldn't. Yuri Vladimirovich is absolutely unique person because in his books uh, he sort of has such a concentration of solutions to all this, which is uh, just very understand much. I can't understand how one person can do it alone. I join your applause. Yuri Vladimirovich is doing a lot alone. It is underestimated still, but it. The proposals which are related to uh, the proposal should be called strategy. It's not a per operative art. Uh, it should be pro uh, developed by the high political authority of the countries who who is eating red cover? Nobody, because it become became easy. Why? It's because the Fukushima uh, has banned, there is no red cover, and we have to respond promptly uh, to this because it is the different uh, game which played in the hot sea. All the res responsive system uh, which related to the we all want to, when we collect such a forum, gather so many people, we determine, we have to identify strategy and substrategy and understanding to the strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikolai Vasilch. We are finalizing our section today. I want to once again express my satisfaction and gratitude to all those present for this uh, circle of what we tackled up on. I think that uniting all the efforts of the Institute of Economic Strategy and uh, this so in the spirit, in, in line with the spirit of our decisions, there are two tasks always. This triad was mentioned today in scientific support of the survival of the mankind is the key objective, is the key task. task uh, science can do it. And what Nikolai Vasilch was telling, they're talking about, it is the first degree response to challenges. It's our um, joint objective. We've got these materials, the work group will continue working on this together with our Chinese friends. This will provide a good opportunity for new proposals. What is interesting is that White people are sitting here today, religion, Christian religion, which is here in this uh, audience, and you know, was ruling the ruling the planet Earth for a long time and generated a lot of hazards re realized by the world wars, degradation of the degrading of the family, and the.
where the sources of the greatest hazard in the area of human activity and it is it would be unwise or silly to trust the white people, white race to rule the planet. That is the foundation of the I believe that I see that we should in the first instance to divide the effort, put together the effort of these blocks, those ideas which were well put forward, they may not be understood by the part of the mankind uh, with different religious and moral and uh, cognitive um, understanding, but on the whole, what uh, we will finalize Remembering what Jean-Jacques Rousseau used to say, the, his first point was that the f society of the future shouldn't be based on the built on the criticism, but on creative activities. We must know all the hazards, all risks, but at the same time put forward the creative uh, perspective without science and whether it is black race, white race, or, or yellow race, or any kind of religion, without science, it is impossible. That's why Yuri Vladimirovich, you put upon this, thank you everybody for good work, and thank you Nikola Andreevich for the wow, excellent management of this section. Remind, tomorrow we we'll work in the university, I'm working in the university, the financial university, the government of the Russian Federation in the Leningradsky Prospect. So all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome and to come to the Russian Academy all the of best. Science. All the best to you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> Thank you.